welcome back. I'm Tedward and thanks to Boston Motorsports today we're driving a 2022 Cadillac CT5V Blackwing. This is equipped with a six-speed manual transmission as it should be although there is an optional 10-speed auto. We'll get to that in a bit but this has a supercharged 6.2 liter V8 making 668 horsepower 659 pound-feet of torque all delivered to the 305 section tires in the rear. No all-wheel drive here. This is a proper sports sedan. This is what I absolutely loved about cars growing up, a sleeper. This is a Cadillac. This is why I liked M5 so much. This is why I bought an E39 M5 myself. Now, obviously, this is pretty muscular. It's got the carbon fiber package, so there's a few telltale features of this CT5 that let you know that it's more than just your average old man going to the golf course. This is a tire shredding beast. And from the back, I do think it's got one of those if you know, you know type rear ends. Because the same way like an E39 had that broad stance with the wide 275 section tires, this has 305s. And when you're behind it, you definitely know that it's putting down some power. Now, it does have some cool tech in like GM world. It's got the rear view camera. So you can toggle between a standard mirror or the camera. But that camera's popped up right there in the GPS antenna, which I think is pretty pretty darn clever. The styling of the car is muscular and subtle. There's a bit of, ooh, is it what I think it is kind of vibes going on here. And that's my favorite thing about a real sports sedan. We're not flashing our M badges all over the place. BMW has absolutely lost the plot. And that's the thing. M has almost lost all of its meaning in the BMW world because they'll put that badge on anything. But I got to say, this V, this V means something. So let's take a look around. First, up front, we've got these monster six-pot Brembo brakes and an appropriately sized bronze 19-inch wheel with 275s up front. And I told you, 305s in the rear. It has space for things. You could put golf clubs, backpacks, whatever you need in your Cadillac. And you've got a clever little pass-through, so that'll open up some space for you as well. There's room for your kids. Yes, if you wanted a ZL1 Camaro, it might be a little tight for the little ones in the back, but you could drive this to the office. You don't have to be ashamed that you're some hooligan driving to work and oh my goodness, there's Jeff again in his Camaro. No, you can drive this and no one will be the wiser. You've got creature comforts, nice leather, a little bit of stuff back here, but nothing outrageous. I don't have heated rear seats. I only have one charge port for USB-C and our little 12 volt guy there. And I think that speaks to the nature of this vehicle because the way it's optioned out here, which is, is fairly heavily optioned, it's at $100,000 MSRP. If you did that in BMW world, you could get your M5 CS up there real quick. And although there are some all-wheel drive competitors from the Germans out there who might be faster, this comes with a stick shift and it's way more fun. I don't love these door handles because there's a button back here. It's not mechanical. I like mechanical things and it always bugs me that GM went so electronic with stuff like that. But anyway, let's jump under the hood if I can find the thing. There we go under here. Not a whole lot to see just because we've got all kinds of plastic cladding and stuff, but we do have this monster supercharger belt that gives us some indication that there's going to be some power being made here. I am just so dang happy to drive it today. Let's get out there and take it for a ride. I recommend always starting your CT5 Blackwing with the door open just so you can hear the full symphony of this thing. It is raucous. <laughs> yes, that, that is good stuff. We've got our mode selector down here, traction control, rev match, and then some other fun traction systems here. You've got a V button, so you can just do that one tap if you'd like. Bro, track mode, listen to this thing. Unbelievable. I can't believe they sell this to people. Oh, it's so angry. The shifter is fantastic into first. 
let's roll off this relatively heavy clutch. Now, I'm pretty in love with this thing. I'm gonna, uh, oh my God, the snaps and crackles and pops on the overrun are ridiculous. I think we gotta put the windows down for a little zero to 60 here. Let's get the earmuffs on for wind noise and then put these windows down. Let's see what she does. <laughs> Are you kidding me? This thing's ridiculous. Oh, I'm so happy. The thing I love about GM traction control too is that it lets you party. It lets you have a little bit of fun without just stepping in and stomping on it. There's so much energy being sent to these rear wheels and these poor tires are tasked with keeping it all together and putting it to the ground so you go forward instead of just up in a cloud of smoke, which would be fun too. But GM has some tricks up their sleeve. They've got phenomenal magnetic suspension. This has the mag ride and they have traction control systems that'll make your head spin. Now I had the pleasure of driving one of these out in California on some beautiful canyon roads with my friend Miles, another POV uh, YouTube creator. His car is blue, it's gorgeous, and it's so much fun out there. And I completely understand why he bought it because the second I got behind the wheel, I thought, this is what all the people who are nostalgic for an E39 M5 remember their car driving like. It doesn't. This is better <laughs> and it's so good. Drivability, man. It's easy to drive. The clutch, like I said, it's a little bit heavy. You get used to it very quickly. I'm coming out of my Honda Civic Type R, which is a very light clutch. So in comparison to that, this might be a leg press, but it's not bad. It's not gonna give you any trouble if you had to daily drive this thing around with a manual if that was worrying you. It's also just easy to drive. I think GM does a great job of connecting clutch, throttle, and shifter. So it feels natural to get in and play with. Although I do think that there could be a little bit better throttle tuning. I want a little more out of the initial bite of the throttle pedal, which is kind of why I'm using the rev match, the auto rev match, because I find that doing it myself is fine, but I, I, I'm just off a little bit. My God. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I genuinely, genuinely love this car. Holy cow, what a beast. This is just a complete animal. Oh, GM does some real magic stuff. You know, it's weird because sometimes they make some kind of junky Econo cars that aren't like the most impressive things in the world. While they might make some clunky, junky, cheap cars for people, they, when they put pen to paper on some serious metal, they do not fail. They are unbelievably talented and precise at making thrill machines that are fun and easy and approachable, but also a little dangerous. Like this isn't, oh, the thing I love about this is this is like, it's not safe. Yes, it will catch you if you fall because it has the systems in place for that. But man, does this give me a lot of fizz. And then when you're driving around town, you've got all this like low end torque. It's just so chill. I'm actually like, I feel great right now. I feel, I feel so good. This car makes me feel good. I wanna go find more straight pavement just so I can go do one, two, three, no lift shifts. Like I, oh God, I haven't felt like this in a while. I love this car. I'm 
I'm gonna say something that maybe won't resonate with everybody, but this is giving me so much more excitement than the C8 Corvette. Like, I think I like this car like a lot more than I like the Corvette. Oh, it handles too. It's not light. <laughs> oh my god. You gotta just shut it down. Like, you can't do this forever. You've gotta just like, okay, cool it, put it in six. You'll go straight to jail. This is like a 200 mile an hour car, for sure. On the highway, 70 miles an hour. It's a Cadillac, it is a Cadillac, it's relaxed. I'm still in track mode. I don't care. I don't even want to experience the suspension in any other mode because it's doing a great job. It's not too stiff even in track mode. Like, this is great. My Honda is too stiff. This isn't. Um, it's it's barely at 2,000 RPM. I'm probably lugging this engine. I shouldn't even be in six gear under like 80 miles an hour. Just, I just want to go fast. <laughs> Uh, this is more Autobahn than BMW is right now. Like straight up, this is pure, pure good stuff. The no lift shift is like so trippy. I know it's been around for a long time and you can program it into certain cars or whatever and you tune them, but it's not been part of my life and I'm having so much fun. This is like a straight up drag machine. And this is what the American market got right. With these types of cars, you're able to just slam one, two, three, four, like it's just built for it. There's something about that is completely missing in the Germans. If you go get into my E39 M5, I know I keep comparing that. I know they're not like comparable cars, but what I'm saying is like BMW gearboxes, even today, do not feel good doing that. They feel very wrong. It feels like you're beating the absolute daylights out of them. They don't want to. This does. There's something about the one, two in this car that you're like, I can't, you couldn't possibly shift fast enough. It will just take whatever you throw at it. And yet it still handles and behaves and everything's so rock solid. This is, oh, guys, like if I could, I, I couldn't, I can't give a more glowing review of this vehicle. This is like one of my favorite things in the world. This is like what I like about driving. This is the kind of surprise I want to experience when I drive something new. <sighs> this is just getting lost, completely lost in the automotive world today. Very few things bring joy like this. I just got out of a ZR2 Silverado, naturally aspirated, 420 horsepower, V8, 6.2 liters. That needs this engine. We need to start, Chevy, come on, man. You have the tools. Put this in everything. Blow the doors off of everyone. 100 grand sounds like a lot of money, but if you wanna go buy you know, the equivalent E63 or M5 or whatever, like you can get those up to like 150, probably 200 at this point. I mean, it's just absolutely stupid because those used to be cool where you're like, wow, yeah, they cost a lot of money, but you're getting you know, some miraculous thing. Whereas like now this is more fun. This is more fun. And this is why, oh my goodness, please, if you buy one of these, you must, you must get a manual transmission. Do not, do not get that 10 speed auto. I'm sure it's lovely. I'm sure it works and I'm sure it's super fast. But the point, the real point of this car is this incredible gearbox. And if you have the ability to drive a manual transmission, this is what you should do. I'm glad they still make it. Get off your phone, lady. I'm glad that they still make a 10 speed because of course there's people who you know maybe are physically incapable um, of driving a stick shift and you don't want to gatekeep a car this great because somebody maybe doesn't have a leg or something like that like i think everybody needs to experience this thing so that's great but if you have the ability to get this six speed that's the ticket and make no mistake this car this car is probably going to be like the ctsv wagon in the future like this is the last of a breed this is dying this is not going to be around forever 
I want one. I might actually have to go splurge on one. I'm not totally sure, but I actually think this is one of the greatest cars in modern times. So huge thank you to Boston Motorsports. Thank you to GM and Cadillac for just producing this thing. Good, good job, good job. Thank you guys for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing, joining the Patreon, buying stickers in the new store. I'm gonna have some new t-shirts and stuff up there soon too. I really appreciate that support. It's awesome to see on your cars. And don't forget to respect the drive. Go drive something that makes you happy. Sometimes I get bored of stuff. I drive everything, man. So even I get a little tired where I'm like, yeah, yeah, just going and driving another fast SUV, okie doke. But my goodness, today I'm reminded of why I do this. I love this car. I'll see you in the next one. Sorry, little grumman.